Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in this episode of AWS Cloud Practitioner Exam, I really want to talk about one very important key concept and that is AWS Identity and Access Management, better known as IAM. So IAM, my friends, it really helps you securely manage your identities and access to the AWS resources, AWS services, you really need to understand how to do this access management so that you can keep your users happy and also keep your application running. So let's begin today's episode with question number 215, part 35. The question is saying which of the following actions are controlled with AWS Identity and Access Management, which is better known as IAM, and you have to choose two correct options. And please note, my friends, as I just said, this episode, we are going to fully dedicate to IAM, Identity and Access Management, because this is a very critical concept, not just from the exam perspective, but real working on AWS. And that's why, my friends, in addition to showing you the AWS official documentation on AWS Identity and Access Management, I will also tell you and wrap up the entire concept in my own words. I will also tell you how does it actually works, and then I will give you the key components of IAM. IAM and lastly, I will make you understand why IAM is so important. For now, let's check out what are the options given here. First of all, option A, control access to AWS service APIs and to the other specific resources. Then we have option B, provide intelligent threat detection and continuous monitoring. Option C, protect the AWS environment using multi-factor authentication, better known as MFA. And then we have option D, grant user access to AWS data centers. And lastly, provide firewall protection for applications from the common web attacks. The first correct answer is option A, control access to AWS service APIs and to other specific resources. And then we have option C, protect AWS environment using multi-factor authentication. So friends, let's first understand what exactly is IAM, why it is so important. And so as we always do, let's start with the AWS official documentation. So here you can understand AWS identity access management. It really helps you securely manage identities and access to the AWS services and the resources. So then you can understand why exactly we need IAM. Here you can read, use AWS identity and access management to manage and scale workloads and workforce access, securely supporting your agility and innovation in AWS and this is a good video to watch here you will really understand why exactly we need IAM then in this documentation only you can understand what are the benefits of the same I will also explain this in my own words then you can also look around for the use cases of IAM for example IAM helps you apply fine-grained permissions and scale with the attribute based access control it also lets you manage per account access or scale access across AWS accounts and application and then establish organization wide and preventive guardrails on AWS and lastly set and verify right size permission towards least privilege. Now let's understand how exactly this all works. So first of all the very natural step is that you create and manage user and this involves that you really define how can the users access your AWS account. Then we have group users. Well, the group user, it's essentially a concept where you organize the users into the groups for efficient management of the permissions. Then we have create roles. So basically, this will help you assign the temporary security credentials to the users and the application without long term credentials. And lastly, it helps you manage the permissions. This will really give you a control what actions the users can perform on the AWS resources through the policies. So this last step, manage permission is the authorization part. And the very first step that I told you, create and manage users, that is the authentication part. Now coming to the key components of the IAM, first of all, as I just said, the first component is users. So you need to create individuals with the long term credentials for accessing the AWS account. Secondly, the groups. So basically groups is nothing but the collections of the users that can be managed as a single entity for the permissions. Moving on with the roles. So roles basically my friends, they are temporary security credentials that can be assumed by the users or the application. And finally, we have policies. Well, policies Policies are some set of rules that you define for the users, group or roles. And now my friends, let me explain why exactly IAM is so important. So first and foremost, IAM provides you security. So it protects your AWS resources by controlling who can access them and what can they do with the resources. So I hope you can relate authentication and authorization. 
then we have compliance it really helps you meet the security and compliance requirement by enforcing access controls and lastly it gives you efficiency it really simplifies the user management and permissions assignments so simply putting my friends iam is the foundation of the security in aws by effectively managing users group resources policies you can actually protect your sensitive data and the aws resources now let's talk about these options given here option a so basically my friends iam it really allows you to manage the permissions and the access to the various aws service apis and the specific resources such as the amazon s3 buckets or maybe let's say ec2 instances and many more so iam provides the fine grain control over what actions the users can take or maybe the roles can perform within the aws environment Coming to this option given here, multi-factor authentication, well, this one adds an extra layer of security to your AWS account. And as you may know, the multi-factor authentication, it really requires the users to provide two or more forms of identification. For example, first could be, of course, the password and second could be something else like a temporary token or SMS code. So I'm sure that you must be using these kind of things from your bank accounts or maybe your pizza delivery boys. In case you still have any confusion, let me know in the comment section. I will surely try to answer. And also I can tell you that these kind of questions on IAM keep on coming very frequently. They have recently come in the exam also. So please try and understand the concept. I want to remind you that please join in in the episode number 37 because there I would take some additional questions on the AWS identity and access management. So that video, video number 37 will be an extension and addition to this current video. Video. So please join that video to make sure that you are covering the entire syllabus on IAM. Moving on with the next question, question number 252, it says the company's web application requires AWS credentials and authorization to use an AWS service. Remember that we talked about the AWS credentials and authorization in the very previous question. Which IAM entity should the company use as a best practice? Your options are option A, IAM role. Option B, I am user. Option C, I am group. And option D, I am multi-factor authentication. Now friends, I really recommend you to please rewind the video, really understand what I just said about role, user and group and multi-factor authentication. So these concepts are really closely associated with I am really important to understand. Okay, so now let's check out the correct answer and that is option A, I am role. And why this is so? Because the company should use the IAM role to grant AWS credentials and authorization to its web application. And you really need to understand that the IAM role are a secure way to grant permissions to an entity that really needs to access the AWS resources. And in this case, in this question, we are talking about the web application. So here you can see web application that really requires the AWS credentials and the authorization. And by using IAM roles, the web application can assume the role and gain temporary security credentials. Remember, we talked about the temporary security credentials when I was showing you the AWS documentation. So basically, to gain the temporary security credentials to access the AWS services. And the importance of this is that it eliminates the need to store and manage long-term access keys or the security keys within your application code, reducing the risk of accidental exposure and misuse. Now, how many of you can really tell me what is the counterpart service that we use in Microsoft Azure for IAM and also tell me what is that service in Microsoft Azure that you use to secure credentials or maybe the certificates let me know in the comment section moving on with the next question question number 253 that says what information is found on an AWS identity and access management credential report and please mind you have to choose two correct options the first option given is the date and time when an IAM user's password was last used to sign in to the AWS management control. Option B, the type of multi-factor authentication device assigned to an IAM user. Option C, a user agent browser identified for each IAM user currently logged in. And option D, whether the multi-factor authentication has been enabled for the IAM user. And lastly, option E, the number of incorrect login attempts by each IAM user in the previous 30 days. So let's check out the very first correct answer and that is option A, the date and time when an IAM user's 
password was last used to sign into the AWS management console. And the second correct option is option D, whether the multi-factor authentication has been enabled for an IAM user. And just so you know, my friends, IAM credential report that we are talking about in this question, it really provides you with the details about IAM users in an AWS account, including their access keys, passwords, MFA devices, and various other security related information. Okay, so now let's move on to the next question. Question number 254 that says AWS supports which of the following methods to add security to the identity and access management users. Once again, you have to choose two correct options. Option given are option A, implementing Amazon recognition. Option B, using AWS shield protection resources. Option C, blocking access with security groups. Option D, using multi-factor authentication and option E, enforcing password strength and expiration. Okay, so could you guess the correct answer? Well, it's very easy actually. Option D is the first correct option using multi-factor authentication. And then we have second correct option as option E, enforcing password strength and expiration. And out of these two options, my friend, we just talked about the multi-factor authentication. And by now, I really trust that you really understand the importance of password strength and expiration. Moving on to the next question, question number 255 that says access keys in AWS Identity and Access Management or IAM are used to, your options are login into the AWS Management Console, option B, make programmatic calls to AWS from AWS APIs. Then we have option C, login to the Amazon EC2 instances and lastly option D, authenticate to AWS code commit repositories. And the correct answer for the same is option B, make programmatic calls to AWS from AWS APIs. So it's a very interesting concept how to manage access keys for IAM user and really important once again I'm telling you it's also given here as a best practice you should always use the temporary security credentials such as IAM roles instead of creating long term credentials such as access keys. So here you can understand what exactly is access keys and relating to this one given here access keys are long term credentials for the IAM users or the AWS root account user. And you can use the access keys to sign programmatic requests to the AWS CLI or AWS APIs. And that's exactly the answer we have chosen as well. And do not miss our other series on Microsoft Azure certifications and also on Gen AI Artificial Intelligence. What are the new discounts that are coming on various certifications? So all these kind of videos we keep on releasing. So please like the video, subscribe to the channel, press that bell icon so that you are getting timely notifications. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.